Hi everyone, I'm Brent Weinberg from LearnerRadiology.com. Thanks for tuning into this last stroke video in the series. This is Stroke Complications and Mimics. We're going to take a look at some of the bad things that can happen after a stroke, as well as some things that you might see uh, complicating your interpretation. So let's think about the complications that you can see after stroke. The ones that you have to think of commonly are hemorrhage, hemorrhagic conversion of an infarct, cortical necrosis, and contrast staining and extravasation. So let's, let's take a look at these. Hemorrhage is related to the injury of tissue from an infarct. The vessels die, the tissue is dying. Because of that, the vessels can uh, no longer be, you know, contain the blood flow, and you can get rupture of those, and you can get gross hemorrhage into the affected area. Now here you see an example. This is a left MCA infarct here. We have this large region of hypodensity in the left MCA territory. And centrally within that, we have some uh, sort of mass-like areas of hyperdensity there, hyperattenuation, and you see it again on the coronal here. That's an area of hemorrhage. Now these are usually more than a centimeter. They usually have mass effect and they're usually blood density. If they're small, you know, a few millimeters, if they're predominantly confined to cortex, if they don't have mass effect, I tend to not call that hemorrhagic conversion. We tend to call that petechial hemorrhage, which has less of an implication because patients can stay on anticoagulation. Uh, yeah, so again, yeah, so don't confuse that petechial hemorrhage, uh, you know, with a hemorrhagic conversion. Cortical necrosis we'll see in just a second here. Cortical necrosis is uh, essentially a more delayed phenomenon. That's microscopic hemorrhage into the cortex. It has little or no mass effect, like little or no edema. Here we have a case of a left MCA infarct on day two after presentation. There's this hypodense region in the left MCA territory. Uh, by day seven, we see now that this cortical gyriform hypertenuation has developed here, kind of following the cortex. But you'll note there's very little mass effect, uh, and it's really following the cortex there. This is what cortical necrosis looks like. You'll hear people call it cortical laminar necrosis. Some people prefer not to call it that because that's more of a pathologic determination. By three weeks, that cortical necrosis has washed out, and now we're left with a kind of volume negative area of encephalomalacia in the left MCA territory. So that resolved on its own. Most of the time, these patients do not have to stop anticoagulation if they're being anticoagulated. Contrast staining is another complication that you may see particularly in patients that have an intra-arterial intervention. This is essentially leaking contrast from the injured brain parenchyma or micro tears in the vessels during angiography. In that case, we get hyperdensity in the vascular territory. It has little mass effect. If you do dual energy and get uh, iodine subtracted images, you will see that that uh, hyperdensity decreases. Usually this is going to wash out within one or two days. So if you don't have dual energy CT, you can just get a follow-up in 24 to 48 hours. And most of the time that's going to go away. So here you see an example. This is a patient came in. Uh, this is prior to a thrombectomy. They've got an occlusion of their distal ICA here with thrombus extending into their, into their MCA. They did a thrombectomy. And uh, you can see now that's recanalized. Probably still some paucity of vessels in the MCA territory, so it's probably not a complete recanalization. Uh, now the patient got a CT afterwards. You see density here in the sort of deep parts of the left MCA territory, maybe some cortical areas of density. If you come up a little bit higher, you see again some cortical areas of density, so kind of scattered hyperdense areas. If we do the iodine subtracted image on dual energy, you see it's a little noisier there because of the technique, but we can see that those areas which are hyperdense do not have hyperdensity on the water only image or the iodine subtracted image. So that's probably coming from iodine in the contrast that has extravasated out or leaked out of leaky vasculature during the procedure. We see on the diffusion weighted imaging from an MR that the patient went on to get that there's a pretty large territory of infarction in the left MCA territory. You also go back and look, all of that hyperdensity from contrast staining was in areas that were clearly infarcted. Not a lot of mass effect there, so that can be a nice clue. It's almost always confined to the areas where the infarct uh, is present. So what are some mimics that you have to worry about? There are a couple of things that can present with stroke-like symptoms, namely seizures, hemiplegic migraine, and venous infarct. Let's take a look at those individually. So seizure, uh, particularly like if they're non-convulsive, so when patients have, you know, a, a, a tonic-clonic seizure, a lot of times they, you know, they'll have a history and that will kind of tell you. Sometimes you can have a presentation with hemiplegia, you know, visual disturbances or aphasia that can be non-convulsive seizure. 
Now, the imaging of seizure is time dependent. In the early, the ictal phase, so either during the seizure or right after, there's going to be usually increased blood flow, increased blood volume. The time parameters, MTT and Tmax, are usually like normal or maybe slightly decreased even because of the increased blood flow. Here you see a patient that presented with a seizure. Uh, this is the day of their seizure. You can see uh, this patient had right-sided weakness, so it's probably a left hemisphere abnormality. And if we look, there's abnormal white matter, and, and generally the, the whole left hemisphere has elevated blood volume. So you see these are not decreased, it's actually increased. So you see there's more blood volume in those areas. Uh, the Tmax, on the other hand, is relatively maintained, so it's, it's kind of normal. Um, day three after this, it's actually gone down to more normal or perhaps like a little bit uh, decreased blood volume on that side. So you can actually see here, you see more blue areas in that left hemisphere, but then the Tmax remains normal. This patient had an MRI showing no diffusion abnormality, so we're not dealing with a stroke or luxury perfusion. And so that late, a lot of times the blood volume can be slightly decreased. Uh, the MTT or Tmax can, uh, can be normal or, or slightly increased, but in this case, it's normal. Migraine can also present uh, with uh, similar symptoms to stroke if you get hemiplegic migraine or so you have uh, some aura or some additional symptoms. On CT perfusion, usually what you're going to see is you're going to see an area that has decreased blood flow and blood volume, maybe a little bit of uh, MTT and Tmax, but it's usually going to be less severe than you would have with a stroke and uh, it, it may not correspond to a vascular territory. So here, uh, this is a paper taken from the literature and a paper by Strombo. Uh, here you can see the migraine across the top. And you see this is uh, the TTP, uh, so the time to peak or Tmax. You can see there's an area back here which is slightly elevated here. So, so it's a little bit more green. And so you got a little bit of elevation of that, of that TTP. Uh, the blood volume and blood flow maybe a little bit down compared to the contralateral side. Two things I'll note, it's probably crossing two territories like both MCA and PCA. And uh, it's not as severe as this patient who has an area of ischemia in the left posterior MCA distribution where the TTP or Tmax is, is more elevated and you have a little bit more drastic change in the MTT as well, a little bit, a little bit more decrease in the CBF. So look for changes that cross vascular territories and maybe are a little bit less drastic than a TIA or stroke. Finally, like one thing you need to look for is venous infarct. Now you should particularly look for these if you have areas of uh, peripheral hemorrhage or area is, uh, you know, vascular territories, which are unusual. Uh, atypical patients, like younger patients, younger women uh, with coagulation risk factors, uh, such as birth control pills, co coagulopathies. In this case, these areas of infarct are due to occluded outflow veins. They're, like I said, they may not be in an arterial territory. They often have hemorrhage. And when you look, if you do your uh, angiographic imaging, in this case, you see a long segment thrombus extending in the superior sagittal sinus coming all the way back to the torcula there. So just keep that in mind when you have atypical presentations of stroke to look at the veins, make sure you don't have a venous thrombus. So in summary, in this stroke series, we've looked at a lot of different possible clinical presentations of stroke. We've reviewed kind of the imaging workup for stroke and what we typically do. That can vary like over different institutions. It's kind of a rapidly evolving practice, so it, it will change over time. We saw different strokes that were intervened upon with the various outcomes. We also talked about some of the complications and mimics of venous infarct, migraine, seizure. Be aware of those things as you may see them sometimes, and the history is really important in those cases. Thanks for tuning in to this series of videos. If you haven't seen the others, check out the playlist. Go back and take a look at those. Check out the entire channel and uh, the learnerradiology.com website if you want to see more videos. Thanks for tuning in today, and uh, we appreciate the support.